Hello and welcome, it's Alex here for Tech Flow, and let's kick off 2021 by talking about the next generation of wireless technology. In other words, how fast is 5G? Now, for those of you that have been following me for a while, or for those of you that know me, you will know that I own my own WISP, which stands for Wireless Internet Service Provision. Basically, I sell broadband to people wirelessly. So this next generation, this 5G stuff, really, really interests me. And this is gonna be an exciting video to go out and test it. I actually was planning on releasing this video before Christmas last year, because I went to London to try and test 5G. I was in 5G areas, but unfortunately, Unfortunately, for some reason, I only ever managed to receive 4G+. Really, really annoying. So we're going to go out today and hopefully do a little bit more testing with a bit more success than we had in 2020. And I'm working with Qualcomm uh, on this video. On Team Android, Qualcomm are the guys that are making this whole uh, 5G thing possible. They've sent me out this uh, Motorola, which has a Qualcomm chip in it. But before we talk about that phone and go out and do some testing, I do just want to touch a little bit on what 5G actually is and the different variants uh, of it. And no, it's not like the 5G you can find uh, on your home router, which actually runs at 5 gigahertz and is called 5G. This is called 5G, but all it means is it's the fifth generation of the mobile data technology. If you would like to know, here in the UK, all of our network providers, so that's 3, EE, O2 and Vodafone, all operate their new 5G, uh, their new 5G networks at about about three and a half gigahertz. One of the main things, and we'll touch on this a little bit later, is capacity. Having higher speeds doesn't necessarily mean one individual person is gonna get higher speeds. It means everybody on the network gets a chunk of a much higher speed. So everybody's speeds are theoretically higher. That's the whole point. So I got into the car and I drove to my closest 5G enabled city, which is actually on the EE network. To my surprise, as soon as I got there, I took the Moto G out of my pocket and, ah, oh, sick. Okay, it's got it. I don't know if you guys can see on here. However, this phone has 5G. This marks the first ever time I have had 5G on a phone. Yes, quite impressive, but not head turning. And I was after head turning. 180 meg. Yes, very impressive, but I'm not impressed enough. I don't think my signal here is very, very strong. What I'm gonna do is drive around town, see if I can get some stronger signal, and hopefully get some better speeds. So next I drove around Lincoln with a signal meter out on my phone until I had a really, really strong signal to the 5G network or to a 5G antenna. I got this really, really strong signal, pulled over uh, and realized that the antenna was right in front of me. So there's quite a lot going on up on top of this building. I think the antennas that we are connected to of these ones. I didn't run any tests here because I came to the conclusion that it would be a little bit unfair doing the test right near the antenna, so I drove about 200 meters down the block where I still had complete line of sight to the antenna and I started my tests. 400 on the download there that clocked at. That is absolutely insane and faster than 99% of most people's home broadband speeds here in the UK. Now there's been reports of other people going out and testing 5G, mainly in America, and the reports have been negative on the fact that the signal has been really bad, meaning that one minute you've got 5G, and then you turn the corner and the next minute you don't. And that's not the case here in the UK because all of our carriers here use what's called mid-band 5G. Now, there's three bands, low, mid, and high band. And basically, the low band means the speeds aren't gonna be as good, but you're gonna be able to go further from the antenna. And the high band basically means that you've gotta be really close to the antenna, but the speeds are really, really good. Whereas the mid-band kind of just lies in the middle of that. And that's what we're dealing with here in the UK. So to test this theory, I drove another corner around the block and then made sure there was a building blocking the complete line of sight that I had before from me and the antenna. I still had the 5G signal. And as you can see on my signal meter, I was about minus 100 dBm, which if you know anything about signal, that is on the worst end of the spectrum. To my surprise, I was still able to pick up a really, really respectable 
acceptable 180 on the download, which is really, really fascinating. And it was at this point that all of this 5G stuff, especially in the mid-band, started to make sense to me. With all of this extra capacity and this pretty decent 5G range, it means that all of our devices in the next five to 10 years, like our cars and uh, wristwatches, never to mention our phones uh, and computers, can all run on 5G and we will have the capacity there to support all of these new connected IoT devices. Five years ago, these phones were the only things on the network. Nowadays, my watch has a SIM card in it and needs to connect too. So this extra capacity of the next generation is really, really welcome. So Alex, what does all of this mean for us now? Well, on this Moto G 5G, it took me three seconds to download the Spotify app and two seconds to download the Netflix app. In each of these apps, it took me 53 seconds to download an entire Spotify playlist, which was 13 hours long. And then over on the video streaming side of things, it took me only three seconds to download a single 40 minute episode of Black Mirror. Now, I didn't wanna stop the testing there. That was only one network in one city, EE in Lincoln. So I picked up a Vodafone 5G SIM card, traveled 45 minutes all the way to Sheffield, and then drove around Sheffield for about half an hour, unable to find any 5G. Until, yeah, I'm completely happy with that 250 megabits per second down on Vodafone's 5G network in Sheffield. Something a little bit more important than that though, I think is the ping. As you can see here, it came in at 25 milliseconds, which is perfectly respectable for even competitive online esports. Now, 5G around a year ago was in the news and it wasn't getting the best press. Some of the more notable stuff was people's battery lives on their phones when using 5G were absolutely awful. And on top of that, their phones were expelling heat. They were getting really, really hot on the 5G network. But I have to say, when I was out doing my test this morning and it was test after test after test, this phone was cold to the touch completely. It never felt warm. And right now, this morning, I was on 100% and now we're on 83% and it is three o'clock in the afternoon. And I've been out hammering this thing, doing 5G speed tests all day and it's literally lost 17% of its battery life. So all of the claims about 5G being really bad for your battery and making your phone overheat, well, it seems Qualcomm have sorted that with the Snapdragon 756G processor inside of here. dual selfie camera. It has an edge-to-edge -edge screen that runs at 95 hertz refresh. It's buttery smooth and I think on the back here it even has a quad camera system. It's got facial recognition, it has a fingerprint reader in the side of it and you know what, to top it all off, I actually really really like this, it is a mid-range phone, right? It's a mid-range phone, it's not gonna break the bank and it's got 5G. I like this thing. But there you guys have it. That is the current state of the 5G network or the fifth generation of wireless technology here uh, in the UK. I wanna give a huge shout out to both uh, Motorola and Qualcomm for working with me on this video and providing with me this phone to go out and do the testing and it did it really, really well. Like I say, no overheating, battery life's great. Love the phone, love the 5G. I think we've had some really, really awesome results today and they're really, really exciting for the future. I'm excited anyway. But for now, my name's been Alex. This has been Techflow. We'll see you in the next one.